Hey guys, my name is Cartoons, and welcome to my very first Razor Academy video. Today I'm going to be teaching you the 5.1 talents for Frost Mages, as well as some class stat priorities. So I do hope you enjoy the video, but let's go ahead and get down to the content. I recommend that we start with the talents, because this is pretty much the most important thing that you're going to be able to know whenever you start a mage, and you start getting into PvP, you start getting into arena. It's very important for you to know the exact talents that you should be taking. Um, I've seen a lot of mages make mistakes in their talents, and that unfortunately costs them a lot of arena games, a lot of RPG games. It costs them a lot of, you know, just things that they could have been a lot better at. But let's go ahead and start with uh, level 15. I take Presence of Mind because Presence of Mind allows you to get um, instant Ring of Frost, instant Polymorphs for CCs. Um, it allows you to get a lot of CCs off, and it's a pretty relatively um, small cooldown, as well as you can do something pretty cool with the idea, is that um, you can do a Presence of Mind and then you can alter time, use the presence of mind, and then alter time back to where you were before, and then you will have two presence of mind which allows two instant casts. So that's something to be able to um, know whenever you're starting mages. And then we're going to move on to level 30. Take Ice Barrier, because Ice Barrier gives you 61k absorbs, well, I mean, around 61k. And it's a pretty low cooldown, it's very much so better than these two, Blazing Speed and Temporal Shield, uh, because of just the low cooldown and the high absorb rate is just very strong, especially since it lasts for a minute, and I recommend taking this anyways. Um, for level 45, take Ring of Frost instead of Ice Ward or Frost Jaw. Frost Jaw can be used sometimes as fire, but it's really not used as frost. And then as Ice Ward, I really don't recommend Ice Ward at all for PvP in any situation. So it's very wise to take Ring of Frost because it's only a 45 second cooldown, and you can um, you can kind of combine this with Presence of Mind, and it's able to do a lot of CC for a lot of targets, and um, it's, it's overall a pretty good spell. You just have to know when to use it and what the best times are. And then for level 60, take Cold Snap. Why take Cold Snap? Because it allows for you to have two sets of Ice Blocks, an Instant Frost Nova when you need it, and of course it heals you for 30% of your health. I know that this is going to be nerfed uh, pretty soon, the Cold Snap nerf anyways. Uh, the healing is going to be nerfed a little bit, but otherwise, it's a really awesome spell. Much better than Cauterize and Greater Invisibility. Greater Invisibility, you can get knocked out, and Cauterize is just going to burn your health away. So I really do recommend getting Cold Snap for the healing, as well as two Ice Blocks is very essential in Arena and RBGs. So, but let's go ahead and move on to level 75. Uh, level 75, this is a pretty controversial one. Living Bomb, obviously, is for fire, but we're not talking about fire right now. We're talking about Frost Spec. Um... You need to take Nether Tempest for most situations. Uh, I know that some people will take Frost Bomb, and that's totally fine. If you want to play Frost Bomb, that's awesome. But most of the time, it's not used in anything other than 2v2. Uh, sometimes I use it in 2v2, but lately I've been using more Nether Tempest globally, just you know, for everything, as opposed to using Frost Bomb in just one scenario. Um, I like Nether Tempest because of its constant damage. It gives you a constant brain freeze proc, which allows you to cast your frost fire bolt instantly down here, um, and it gives you m more and more, you know, just as you use it, uh, like on separate targets and such. But for frost bomb, I know it does give a brain freeze proc after the frost bomb explodes every time, but you can get more Nether Tempest brain freeze procs as time goes on. And then for level 90, um, this is a bit controversial as well, because Invocation is going to be very good next patch, and I know some people are practicing it. But for the majority of mages right now, we're taking Encanter's Ward. Encanter's Ward gives a lot of spell damage. It gives 30% spell damage for 15 seconds whenever it, your Encanter's Ward breaks. And it is a pretty weak shield. I mean, it's not amazingly weak. It's an 18,000 damage. It's not super strong. But at the same time, the spell damage is a lot of spell damage. 30% damage is a lot. And I really do recommend going in Cantor's Ward. And then for Glyphs anyways, um, Glyphs is very interchangeable and it's really about preference. But for like most of my specs anyways, I go for heavy AoE damage. So I take Glyph of Ice Lance, which uh, basically it makes a second Ice Lance, which hits your target for 40% damage. And then, of course, the Glyph of Deep Freeze, it takes your Deep Freeze off of Global Cooldown, which, since your Deep Freeze is only 4 seconds instead of 5 seconds, as of the last patch, it's very vital to take the Glyph of Deep Freeze, but I'm not going to force you to use it. And then, Glyph of Armors, this is a really good one. It increases the defensive effect of each armor by 10%, so, well, an additional 10%. So, for your Molten Armor, it reduces all physical damage taken by 16% instead of 6% because of the Glyph. That's a lot of damage to be negated by just a spell. 
So I really do recommend taking armors, but some people will switch it out for evocation or um, evocation which heals you when you use your evocation or your polymorph which uh, removes all di damage over time effects or dots on your target whenever you polymorph. So you can interchange that for armors or ice lance. Uh, I sometimes do, but most of the time these are the three I'm running for major glyphs. And moving on to the stat priority, this is also one of the most important things that you need to know whenever you're playing a mage. Playing a mage and knowing your stats is very vital. Um, so I'm going to go through what you should be getting towards on these, this menu right here. This is probably the most important menu of your mage, um, is your stats. So obviously, you know, spell power, that comes with gear. That's not something that you can change. Spell power, you, you get more over intellect or whatever. Uh, but here's two that you really need to pay attention to. Haste and hit. Okay, so we're going to start with hit. Hit chance, you need to be at 6% and as close to 6% as you possibly can get. And you can do this by getting reforging. You can reforge your gear in order to get towards um, a 6% hit cap. Because um, once you hit that 6% hit chance, hit rating or whatever you want to call it, um, it allows you to never miss a PvP target. You will never miss a spell. Um, I know whenever you miss a spell and it's very crucial, that's very annoying. So if you were to have 6% hit chance, it really does help you out. Um, in order to be able to keep on your target and keep the pressure without having to worry about missing a target. And what usually I do is when I reforge, I reforge from crit because as um, Frost, you know, with your shatter talent, you really don't need crit uh, a whole lot anyways. I mean, with my reforge crit, I still have 16% and, you know, with shatter talent, uh, I believe that does triple it. So, yeah, I mean, it, or it doubles your critical strike chance, which is a lot um, of critical strike to be able to happen on a target, you know, 32%. So, anyways, let's move on. Uh, but I do want to let you know that you need to get as close to 6%. I know that some people will go like 6.89% or 7.20% on hit chance. And think about it like this. Every hundredth of a percent that's over 6% is a wasted stat. You could be putting that towards something else. And being able to reforge your gear perfectly to be able to get as close as possible, I, this is as close as I could possibly get, it's 6.12% to hit the rating. And um, I was able to reforge my gear in a certain way to be able to get as close as possible and um, it is very difficult but if you just play with it for a while you'll eventually get as close as possible. And then we're going to talk about haste. Okay, the reason I chose haste to be at 7% is because when you get to 12% haste, that's the soft cap. And what soft cap means is it starts diminishing your haste. Like whenever you get haste rating, it doesn't get as much as it do, does right now after 12%. Um, it starts getting lower amounts of haste that you can possibly get from your haste rating. Uh, the reason I chose 7 is because when you hit 12, um, you can hit 12 if you play with a Shadow Priest. I play with a lot of Shadow Priests myself. And um, when I play with the Shadow Priest, they have a passive buff that gives you 5% haste. So 7 plus 5 obviously equals 12, which reaches me over the hit cap, or over the soft cap, I'm sorry. Um, and as you can see, I got as close to 7% as I possibly could. And I would like to let you know that with the Shadow Priest is an extra 5%, which reaches you to 12%, um, which is the soft cap. If you never, ever, ever play with the Shadow Priest, go for 12%. But anyways, after that, after you reach these two important stats to 6 and 7%, um, I, what I do is I gem for mostly resilience and intellect or PvP power. Like, as you can see, I gem mostly for intellect and PvP resilience, and then um, I sometimes gem for PvP power in the blue slots. That's fine. Um, but you don't really gem for mastery. You, you usually should reforge the mastery because uh, mastery is going to be like your number one like thing to reforge to after your haste and hit said before. So I would like to let you know that really you want to get PvP resilience, uh, PvP power, and mastery after you get these three stats or these two stats right here. That's pretty much the stat priority for mages and I know it's a little bit difficult but I do want to recommend all of these because once you finally get this down your mage becomes very strong and you become a very strong player because you're set up with the right tools obviously in real life you know if you're gonna be building like a, a house or something it's gonna be a little bit difficult without all the tools that you need to build a house is that right so think of this as something you've built to be able to create yourself a better gaming experience 
But that does sum it up for me today on my very first Razer Academy video. I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, good news, I'm going to be doing a lot more Razer Academy videos, and I'm going to be doing a little bit more in depth. I know that this is a broad topic, but I do hope that it really did help you out, and I will see you guys next time. Cartoons out.